So let's talk about the epidemic of this here crack pipe. You know, it actually probably wasn't a good idea to mention crack less than 15 seconds into the video. So let's see if this gets monetized. But um, hi, my name is Zaria and I typically make commentary videos just like this one. Um, and today's video is going to be a slightly controversial or not, depending on what race you are. I'm kidding, not like depending on what race you are, but depending on how much common sense you have. Because hair is more than just a musical that came out in the 70s. It is something that most people have had at some point in their life. Now, recently, there has been a lot of stir online to really bring in the new year. Um, we have, let's see, Logan Paul suing CoffeeZilla and then taking it back because of the embarrassment. We have a random lady on TikTok getting sued for using tarot cards to solve a murder. Interesting. James Charles messaging straight men yet again. And apparently Morphe is closing all of their stores. Instead of talking about all of those riveting topics, we are going to discuss the discourse of hair online. Now, recently, aka last month, um, Senate Republicans actually blocked the passage of the Crown Act, which was passed in the House last year. Coincidentally, while we are still battling for our hair rights, we yet again have people using products meant for our hair, far as in people who have... Um, curly coily hair they're using it on their straight hair this is kind of a callback to my video that i did on the gentrification of black culture i recommend watching it it is a little bit all over the place it's like one of my first like genuine video essays but it is a very good one i recommend watching it i'll put it in the card above but i wanted to get into the topic of today's video and what brought up the idea of me wanting to talk about hair even though it's a topic that's been kind of controversial the entirety of black people living in America. Um, I wanted to talk about what brought up this idea and why I wanted to talk about it specifically right now and not on a random Tuesday. So the crack pipe that I referenced at the beginning of this video is the Miele, I actually don't know if it's Miele or Miel growth oil, specifically the rosemary mint scalp and hair strengthening oil with biotin and it encourages growth for hair. Now, if you listen to that title of product, you probably may have assumed that it is an oil because it is oil. This is actually my third bottle. I've been using this product for about, I'm 21 now and I've been using it for about two or three years at this point. I really love it. I think it does help my hair grow a lot. I mean, I also use rice water masks and I use a lot to my hair. I actually have pretty long hair, but I wear wigs because that's more convenient. I'll talk more about that later. A creator by the name of Alex Earl decided to do a cute little Amazon favorites video and she recommended the Miele hair oil. I've been using this for like a little over a month and I've already seen tremendous hair growth. Now, there was many issues that came with this recommendation because one, Alex is white. Two, Alex has straight or maybe wavy hair. I can't really remember the top of my head, but she kind of made this product blow up, a product that wasn't even meant for her, for her primarily white woman, straight haired audience. Alex Earl is kind of one of those content creators where she talks about something and then it immediately goes viral. Everyone and their mom suddenly wants to purchase whatever product that she mentions. She probably makes a killing off of Amazon affiliate codes and Everyone on TikTok was a little bit upset when this specific product became popular because then it encouraged her audience, who is primarily, like I said, white women with straight hair, not really wavy hair at all, that kind of demographic. We're then going into Target and Walmart and anywhere else that this is sold and was buying up this hair growth oil, kind of in the way of the pandemic, deciding to buy every single toilet paper known to man. Same thing with this hair oil. People were buying five bottles at a time to make sure that they could keep it and they could have their hair grow. And people were even going to black beauty stores. And by black beauty stores, I really mean Asian-owned beauty stores that they market to black people. But that's a whole other topic for another video that doesn't even matter right now. But the point is, people were going into spaces that even they were probably getting weird looks going into these beauty stores, buying this hair oil. It is now essentially sold out in most places. Um, I'm honestly worried that when my bottle runs out, I might not even have it. I might not even be able to get another one. Now, when I talk about this, you may think that this is a stupid little product and it doesn't even matter, but it actually leads to a bigger issue. It's essentially that black people typically don't have a lot of products that were made specifically for their hair. Oftentimes, even if there is a perfect product for us, within a little bit of time, a person will purchase that company 
in this case, I'm mentioning Shea Moisture, but a white person purchases his company, decides to cheapen the products, ruin the formula, and now it is no longer good for the people that made it popular in the first place. So you will have aisles, so much product that is meant for people who are typically white. And I say typically white because nine times out of 10 on these bottles, you see white women with blonde hair or brown hair talking about how luscious and shiny their hair is. You know, when you have the biggest products and the biggest companies in the beauty industry don't even care about black people's hair. And that's why if you ever decide to go to the store the next time you go, um, go to the ethnic hair section and see how many products you find, how many brands there are. See how it big it is in comparison to the vast majority of products that are not even meant for our hair. I remember one time I tried to buy Garnier Fructis for my hair, and my hair looked so horrible, I hated it. But the point is, is we don't really have a lot of products meant for our hair anyways. When y'all are wondering why black people are so bothered at the meal drops being sold out and the price being risen, let's look at the white hair sections first of all. Not done. And this is the black hair care section. Wow, we're already done. Drop sold out and price raised by $3. Ridiculous. It doesn't even work for your hair type. Y'all wash it out, please. When you take stuff that is not made for your hair type, you are literally directly taking it from someone else. This is a direct example of that. Like, I don't know what else to tell you. My hair is 4C and it's very hard to find top hair products that are even good for my hair because a lot of curly haired ethnic products go towards that three type three hair section i'll put a description on the screen if you don't know what types of hair there are um type three hair is typically where a lot of the ethnic products cater to anyways so it's already hard in itself to have to find a way to find products for 4c hair specifically low porosity hair which also is my hair i could dip my head under water and my hair will still be dry it is a constant crisis trying to wash my hair. But all this to say, black people are upset because once again, the one product that was meant for them is being bought up by people who can't even use the product anyways, because it's growth oil. Oil sits inside of your hair. If you wash your hair every single day, this product is going to do nothing for you. If you wash your hair every other day, this product is going to do nothing for you. This product is meant for people who wash their hair once a month, once a week, once every two weeks, because that is what a person who has curly, coily hair does because their hair, we put oil in it because we don't need to wash our hair a lot, like people who have straight hair. Time and time again, we see people discuss on whether or not it is just hair. And while I will be talking about it later, um, I do want to say that instances like this really show that you are taking something from us when you don't even you can't even use the product it's not going to do anything for you and while there have been people who have been using the hair growth oil and it has helped their hair and i'm happy for them um i think that the vast majority of people are using the product wrong and yes mia is getting a bag i love that for them but also it kind of sucks because this is another thing that we are kind of losing so this is going to be a little bit boring this is a little history lesson we're going to talk about the history of black hair in america so Ayanna Bird, who's the author of Hair Story, Untangling the Roots of Black Hair in America, in an interview stated that prior to the transatlantic slave trade in many African tribes, hair was significant, indicating a person's social status, marital status, and occupation. Hair was almost like your social security number and it could tell everything about you. And she also goes on to say that one of the first things that happened when people were put onto slave ships was that their hair was shaved immediately taking away the identity of people because hair was our identity in Africa or wherever. And I think that's really interesting because taking away hair in this instance really did erase a person's identity fully. They were just a clean slate. Nothing about them was known. And another fun fact that I discovered was that during slavery times, black people were only allowed to wash their hair or tend to their hair once a week, which was on Sunday. So in the 1900s, after slavery, a lot of Black entrepreneurs actually started making products to kind of help other Black people more so assimilate into white culture, because that's kind of the only way that you were able to survive. So specifically, the most famous one, the first Black, the first, the first female self-made millionaire in America was Madam C.J. Walker, an icon. That's because she created the Wonderful Hair Grower, which was a pomade made with sulfur, coconut oil, 
beeswax, and I believe petroleum jelly to help soothe scalps and aid in hair growth. Now, this is a trend, and it was a trend. It still is a trend now, and I didn't, and I feel like it's going to be a trend whenever, you know, our grandchildren um, are alive, is that you want to be as white as possible in order to succeed in life, whether it's bleaching your skin, putting yourself into white spaces, wearing wigs, sew-ins, whatever it may be in order to fit whatever mold it is. It is a trend that has been happening since we were brought over into this world. And it became a thing of if a slave were to straighten their hair, would they be able to be treated better? Would they be able to seen as an actual person and not just a thing that was meant for work? You know, so it's a lot deeper hair, even when it comes down to texture, not even protective styles, because we're not even at that part yet. So later on, there was the civil rights movement, as you know, 60s through the 70s. And that was also when we saw a trend of people actually wearing their natural hair, specifically in the Afro style. Now, this was popular, the Black is Beautiful trend, um, Black Panthers, all that stuff. And for a brief little moment in history, it was deemed semi-okay for you to wear your natural hair. Even though it was still seen as a political statement, um, and it's really funny that you now look at people do 70s costumes and they're wearing like a blonde afro, whatever. The point is, is that it was seen as a political statement still, but it was more prevalent to see black people actually wearing their natural hair in its natural state and not natural hair, but straightened. Because that's how I wear my hair most of the time. It's just my natural hair, but straightened and like in a bun. This led to the 80s and the 90s. So despite the progress that was being made in the 60s and 70s, now, all of a sudden, we have the chemical straighteners and the chemicals we put into our hair. And actually, these very chemicals are the same chemicals that are giving black women breast cancer today. And they're dying because of the stuff that we were forced to put inside of our hair just to be taken seriously. And then we still have to jump through hoops. That's a whole other thing that we're not going to talk about. But in the 1980s, we introduced jerry curls as well as relaxers and perms. Um, now obviously we have sew-ins, wigs, so many more things to put on our heads that isn't going to make our hair fall out. But at this time, um, people wanted to be seen as professional and they wanted to be seen as clean. And I'm sure that you guys have seen videos of children getting their braids or dreads cut off so they could compete in a game. You see lawsuits of discrimination against people literally wearing their natural hair to work and being fired or sent home or whatever it may be just because of their hair. And again, I'm not even talking about wearing dredge or braids because that's even worse, but literally just wearing your natural hair, what grows out of your head, nothing added to it. People are getting sent home. People are getting discriminated against all because of hair. Literally. So it's not just hair. And I think it's crazy that women have to jump through all of these hoops to get hired um, card from my video on college that I made last week. Um, still pretty eye-opening, but still, black women have to get their master's degree, sometimes their doctorate, to be taken seriously. They have to not wear their own hair, because that, again, makes it not be taken seriously. They have to do all of this stuff just to please a random Todd. I mean, who is Todd? The most popular lawsuit was in 1981. This was Rogers versus American Airlines. A federal district judge in New York dismissed her claims of racial discrimination, ruling that her hairstyle was a mutable characteristic and she had an option of quitting her job. In addition, there was an alternative provided to Rogers in the form of a hairpiece. The judge also re rejected the idea that cornrows were associated with African Americans. Yeah. And indicated his belief that Rogers chose the style to emulate Bo Derek, a white actress who adopted the hairstyle for her role in the movie Ted, which had been released two years prior to the judge's ruling. Just to pause, put a pin in that case really quickly. Imagine a white judge looking you in your face and telling you that you decided to wear cornrows because of a white actress in a movie that came out two years ago. And if the judge would have done any sort of research or care, even just a slight bit, he would have found out and learned that people put did cornrows to literally put food now to put food in their hair like rice corn things like that so they could eat because they didn't know how long the boat ride would be in another case there was the eeoc versus the Catas catastrophe management solutions catastrophe catastrophe i'm gonna be so embarrassed when i edit this and realize how badly i mispronounced that catastrophe it's catastrophe 
And it's embarrassing that I am a college graduate set to get my master's degree. And I looked at the word catastrophe and I said catastrophe. But a federal district court judge in Alabama dismissed the lawsuit on much of the same grounds as in the Rogers case, saying basically that racial discrimination must show bias on traits like a person cannot change, like skin color. The court ruled that hairstyles don't fit into that category, and in an appeal, the 11th Circuit Court of Appeals upheld that ruling in 2016. So, again, people see hair as a trait that can be changed. But I think that's a little bit messed up, because you really can't change how your hair looks. I mean, you can. The example that I just gave isn't really a good example if you are a person who isn't a person of color and you don't understand why it's such a big problem. Imagine if you were naturally born with red hair, beautiful red hair, and you were told that you had to change your hair every single day because red hair wasn't seen as professional. And despite that being your natural hair color and what you were born with, what you were made to look like, and you were told no matter where you go that you have to change your hair color because that's not seen as professional and you can lose jobs, get sent home, get discriminated against just because of your hair color. That sounds ridiculous, right? It's the same thing with hair texture. It's what you're born with and you're being told that what you were born with isn't good enough and you lose opportunities because of that. It's ludicrous over something that you can change, but you shouldn't have to. Obviously, you shouldn't show up to work with your hair looking like a mess, but I think if your hair is put together and it is your natural hair, you should be allowed to wear that anywhere and not have any issues with discrimination or, you know, getting fired over something as trivial as that. Basically, that's what I'm trying to say. If you were able to just wake up in the morning and put your hair in a butt and be able to go to work, that is fine, that's decent, that's professional. But you literally putting in hours because, again, it's not easy wearing your natural hair anyways. You have to dish out hundreds of dollars on products that may not even work for you just to try to figure out your own little regimen. Um, it's just not fair. Um, but again, let's talk about hair discrimination now. So, and speaking of hair discrimination, this is a recent act that has been trying to be passed for the past couple of years. And it is called the Crown Act. It was created in 2019 by Dove and the Crown Coalition in partnership with the state senator Holly J. Mitchell of California to ensure protection against discrimination based on race-based hairstyles by extending a statutory protection to hair texture and protective styles such as braids, locks, twists, and knots in the workplace and in public schools. So out of the 50 states that we have, only 17 have made the Crown Act a law. And no shocker here, the only one that is in the South is Louisiana. And I guess Tennessee, but I don't really count Tennessee as like the true South, you know. And in August of 2016, the Perception Institute set out to explore whether Americans generally show a bias, implicit or explicit, towards natural hair worn by black women, whether black women share this bias as well. And they found, on average, white women show explicit bias towards black women's textured hair. They rate it as less beautiful, less sexy, less attractive, and less professional than smooth hair. Black women in the natural hair community have significantly more positive attitudes towards textured hair than other women, including black women in the national sample. So that's interesting. Millennial naturalists have more positive attitudes towards textured hair than all other women. So that's positive because that includes both black women, white women, and all women of all races. Black women perceive a level of social stigma against textured hair, and this perception is sustained by white women's devaluation of natural hairstyles. Almost all women worry about their hair in some extent. Black women experience high levels of anxiety more than white women, however. One in three black women report that their hair is the reason why they haven't exercised compared to one in ten women. One in five black women feel social pressure to straighten their hair for work, twice as many as white women. Black women are more likely to report spending more time on their hair than white women. One in four black women have difficulty finding products for their hair. More than half have not been able to find products for their hair, period. Also, 
the 2021 Dev Crown Research for Girls reveals that 47% of Black mothers report having experienced discrimination related to their hair. 86% of Black teens who experience discrimination state that they've experienced discrimination based on their hair by the age of 12. So 100% of Black elementary school aged girls in the majority white schools report on experiencing hair discrimination by the age of 10. 66% of black girls in majority white schools report experiencing hair discrimination compared to 45% of black girls in all school environments. All this to say, the hair discrimination is something that is so prevalent in everyday life. So again, this video is literally about a stupid little growth oil, this little thing that has caused so much stir online. And the notion that it is just hair and that it's not a big deal and it's just one product is so much deeper than that because the entirety that black people have been in the united states um they have struggled they have fought for representation they have fought to be seen to be heard and something as stupid as being able to wear their own hair and i think that the disconnect here is that white people or people that are not black have not I guess, well, people who have hair that is not curly have probably never once even thought about their hair, aside from I'm having a bad hair day. They get a chance with straight hair to do whatever they want to their hair with honestly no issues at all. They're able to keep positions of power because it's, you know, their hair is just the default. And that's something that people don't understand is that a white person is seen as the default. Any deviations from that is seen as something that's negative and something that is not favorable or desired in this context or whatever. And it's very disheartening because as a person who has black hair and the person who's wearing a wig right now, I wear my wigs because it's easier. It is so much easier than to wear my natural hair and to be called a variety of names, um, especially by those of black men. I actually have a story. Um, I used to wear my natural hair to school every single day between my freshman year to sophomore year that's pretty much all that I did but this instance made me start wearing sew-ins um and then eventually wigs I was wearing my natural hair and I decided to try out bantu knots and then have my hair be curly like normal curls as opposed to like my coily hair and a black person um would take pictures of me throughout the school and post his Snapchat story, making fun of me talking about how horrible I looked calling me a variety of slurs for black people Um, And again, this was a black person. So all this to say is that, again, it is not just hair. And yes, it is one stupid little product. And I'm sure that it doesn't even matter in the grand scheme of things. But the notion and the idea that this product spurred a shortage of a product is very disheartening. And it honestly makes me worried for the future of hair when it comes to black people and representation for that matter. This problem is not targeted to those non-black people who have type 3 or type 4 hair. And if you think that the problem is you and that these videos and people talking about white people taking over the black hair care industry, it's not about you. And I've seen so many TikToks of girls with really pretty curly hair talking about like, oh, I guess I can't use the Miel hair oil because I'm white. And it's like, it's not about you. This isn't hate to the original creator who made the video or made it a trend. Um, I'm also not saying this is the fault of the multiple white people complaining about the growth oil being oily. And I know ignorance sucks, but they get money from it and they are a really good company. So I think they deserve, you know, all the income from this, you know, case. But for centuries, for centuries, most of the world has been surrounded by white people in power, making it difficult for people who are not white to literally survive. You think about, you know, in Europe, here, wherever it may be, it is white people trying to take over the world, trying to make themselves seem as though they are superior. I'm not saying right now, but I'm saying historically we have seen it. We have seen white supremacy, white nationalism. We have seen people like Hitler come into power and leave power. We've seen Darwinism. We've seen so many content, so much content of people saying that people who are not white are less than. And it's a miracle that as a black person, I'm allowed to go to school, I'm allowed to drive, I'm allowed to have a bank account, I'm allowed to vote. It's great and it's a lot of progress. So all this to say is that I do think that our tiny little section in Walmart or Target should be allowed for at least the people who the products are made for. And I don't think that's too hard to ask.
you know? But either way, that is my video. I hope you guys liked it. And if you did, make sure to give it a big thumbs up because it does help little old channels like mine. Make sure to subscribe to me as well. That would be very lovely and grand. Um, yeah, I guess. Um, I guess that's literally it. I feel like I don't have anything else to say, but I will say comment down below your opinions on the growth oil, what your thoughts on the whole TikTok issue is and all that stuff. I would love to hear your thoughts. If you are a black person with... Um, type 3 type 4 hair and leave your comments down below let me know how you've dealt with your hair and your journey with it if you are natural or you're not um let me know your thoughts i really want to know and i guess that's literally it so make sure to stay happy stay healthy and stay safe and i'll catch you guys in the next video bye guys